the Connection Leaders Forum, the Strategy and Resources Committee and the Methodist Council have each sought to focus on how we could make resources available, that's both financial and human, uh, but not just the resources, but also the thinking, so our praying, our theological reflecting, our studying the scriptures together, that enable communities at every level of connectional life to take our calling seriously and to be challenged by our calling. So there's some work on the use of uh, our resources, there's the development of the connectional property strategy, but then there's also the shape and nature of the connectional team. Uh, and hopefully also the way that the conference itself can engage in a conversation around the themes of our calling and what as a church we need to do to take that seriously. The calling of the Methodist Church is to respond to the gospel of God's love in Christ and to live out its discipleship in worship and mission. It does this through worship the church exists to increase the awareness of God's presence and to celebrate God's love. Learning and caring to help people grow and learn as Christians through mutual support and care. Service to be a good neighbour to people in need and challenge injustice. Evangelism to make more followers of Jesus Christ. Worship for Methodism is all about coming together. It's about being a collective and bringing lots of different people from different backgrounds into one place to worship God. One of the things that is common for us all is that we worship together. That runs throughout Methodism from our small classes that we started with to the way that our churches operate now. We find ways of worshiping God together. Worship for Methodism is not an abstract is a living reality. And the worship to Methodism is not what you do within 30 minutes on a Sunday or one hour on a Sunday or during service. It's a lifestyle with God. I'm Ian Rutherford. I'm the City Centre Minister at Methodist Central Hall in Manchester. Today is the day of Pentecost, and we've been talking about the way that the Holy Spirit fell upon the disciples, and they were empowered to go out into the streets with the message of the good news. And so we thought rather than just preach it, we'd actually do it. And so we're here in Piccadilly Gardens, right in the centre of Manchester, just to declare the wonderful works of God and we're having a good time. I think the idea that worship is private and closed off goes against everything from the Old Testament and the New Testament, where everything was about being out in the open. And so in this time of worship, we're showing ourselves that actually worship is for the whole of life not just what you do in church. I think that's such an important part of what we do. It's not about individualised worship, it's about us all being there together. And actually in Methodism, worship is the biggest equaliser. Everybody comes into a church and is welcome, regardless of who they are, what their background is, what gender, sexual orientation or anything. They're all welcome in our church. So I think our worship needs to be able to help people connect with the highs and the lows, the joys and the sorrows, the laughter and lament. Learning and caring is very important to the church because we do in our everyday lives. I think a wise person is a person that's willing to learn. And if you care for people, you have compassion because you understand where they're coming from. I think a willingness to listen within the church and within our calling is central because when you listen to someone, the first thing you are doing is saying to that person, even if you're not saying anything, that what you have to say, that who you are, that what you have experienced is important, that it matters, that it is valid. It's about providing the right conditions in which we can learn and grow. And I think however long you've been a Christian or however short a time you've been a Christian, there's masses to learn and that's exciting. We want to learn more about God, we want to learn more about the world, and we want to care for everything that God has created. Therefore, we care for all human beings. I'm Reverend Darren Middleton. I'm a Methodist minister. I'm also an army chaplain, and I have the privilege of being army chaplain here at uh, 29 Commando Regiment at the Royal Citadel. A lot of what we do is about being with. So we are with. It's that paraclete ministry coming alongside um, the boys and girls, uh, the soldiers and the officers. Um, and it really is, in chaplaincy terms, about 95% presence, forming relationships, being with, running along 
alongside, quite literally. Climbing ropes, quite literally. It's about doing all those things in order to really forge that relationship so that for that 5%, um, we can really have a good um, kind of witness about God and their lives. We're there for people. And Jesus was all about people. And so we need to put people at the heart of all that we are. And I think it's the core to the Christian faith. I think Jesus was particularly active in his communities and loving people and sharing the story of God with them. And, and so it would make sense. I think any Christian movement should be active and in, 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 at work in, in their local communities. When I think about how important service is to the Methodist Church, so that's what we see in the life of Jesus when on the night of the Last Supper, he says, I will wash your feet. And he washes the feet of each of the disciples. And that's part of expressing love for one another, just in the way that God has loved us. And so we do this with the whole range of Methodist bodies that are undertaking a range of tasks in the life of local communities, the work of Action for Children, the work of All We Can, the work of Methodist Homes. We see it in the support for food banks. We see it in the work of befriending that goes on, in caring. I don't know how we can be a Christian or how we can have a gospel without actually service. I mean, when you look, just look at the example of Jesus, who was always going out, serving, healing, helping, coming to people in their need. My name is Mark Davenport. I'm the presbyter here. Uh, at Chelsea Methodist Church and together through the caseworkers, um, through the, the help that we offer spiritually, we just help those that really are, are alone, those that have very little. So it's not just homeless people, um, but it's also how can we extend the welcome to everyone to be able to come and to use what is here by God's grace. We give them an opportunity to be in a safe space, somewhere where they're welcomed, they're accepted, uh, somewhere where we can talk to them and listen to them, we have a bit of a laugh with them, you know, and a bit of fun, and hopefully share a bit of Jesus with them. I'm Sarah Hume, and this is Tiddlywinks, which is um, a, a group for naught to fives, for parents, carers, and whoever else wants to come along. I think for us, it's definitely a safe space that people feel that they can come and be part of a community. There's definitely a real sense of family and community that brings them back and that goes on during the week. It's not just a Friday thing for them. So in that way, for me, it's quite like church. When people say, oh, there's, there's nothing you can do, what we can do is pray, and what we can do is remember people. And it's, it's surprising how often people respond really positively to either saying, we'll pray for you, or, well, what we do when we look at this world situation is to pray, or, would you like us to remember that in our prayers, even if they don't want to be a part of the prayer themselves? And it's, it's realising that there is this spirituality all around us. The idea of, of justice, I think, has been core to Methodism right from the beginning, and it's one that we identify very much as our DNA. There are so many examples around the country, um, historically and now, where Methodists have stood up because they've realised that there is something wrong there is something unjust going on um, and they want to try and make a difference. So it might start with a church that is um, concerned why there are so many people who are hungry. So they get involved with a food bank and they are helping people, they are serving people in the local community. And then they start asking these justice questions and that's when they might start writing to their MP. They might start finding out more of the facts of what's going on and working out what are the structural injustices in our society um, where they can start making a difference. I believe evangelism, it can be done in any way. It can be baking cakes and handing it out. It can be running a youth club, writing a book. And I think we need to do that as a church. Our English word evangelism comes from the biblical Greek word you and galion, which, is just, which just means good news. And so evangelism, our commitment to evangelism, means that we are a people who are committed to sharing good news, to caring the good news, to expressing the good news of Jesus Christ, and to sharing it with new people. It's a really important part of what the church does, and I think we do it in a really positive way. We welcome people in, and we talk to them, and we listen to them. What God needs you to do, I think what God is inviting you to do, is to speak about how have you been met by the good news in your own life. What has it felt like for you to experience the movement of God? 
or the power of the Holy Spirit, or however you want to talk about it. And there are innumerable ways to talk about how God moves in our lives, which is wonderful. We're here to share good news and we're here to bring the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ to people and articulating both in, in what we do but in what we say uh, that God absolutely loves them and wants them to enjoy life that is flourishing and full. There is a place for describing the core ideas of our faith in really creative and compelling ways to be able to verbalize those things. How do we, with cultural relevance, with sensitivity, put language to these core foundations of our faith. That's critical, that's important. I'm Sam Beasley and I work here in the Launceston Area Methodist Circuit as a pioneer. With a lot of what we do, it's about encouraging families to meet together, encouraging social things to happen. One of the great things that we've done here is actually just giving um, ladies that come in with their families and with their kids free sort of pedicures, manicures, so that they understand that they, they have value and they have worth. And I think that in itself just shows a, a, a different level to perhaps what other community centres might do. And, and that, should, that pushes across a message of actually we as a church care and we care because God loves you. We as Methodist people can engage in worship and caring, in, in service, in mission evangelism. So what I want to do is through our calling help people to learn what it means to share their faith and to share that with others. All of us are meant to be evangelists, not just the, the presbyters, not just the deacons, not just the, the lay leaders or the lay ministers or the lay workers, but all of us are called to be evangelists. We start from that point and we realize that we will, each of us, talk about that good news and share that good news in different ways. And that is beautiful. So if you're a woman or a man or black or white or Asian or LGBTQ or straight or an immigrant, you know, you're going to be talking about God and the power of God in really different ways. And, and you're an evangelist. If we are worshipping and we are, we are living out God's holiness in our lives, we will start building those relationships where it is possible to start sharing the deep things of faith with other people. Our calling is all tied up together and it is all about living out God's love for us in the world. Methodists know themselves to be loved by God and therefore Methodists want to share that in the life of the world through service, through learning and caring, through our acts of evangelism.